By the way, this goes back a long, long way. Go back again to uh, the 1800s. Two of our greatest preachers, men named Moses Lard and J.W. McGarvey. They opposed instrumental music. And when you asked them why, they said, because the Bible is silent, therefore it's wrong. They supported the missionary society. And when you asked them why, they said, because the Bible is silent about it, so it's okay. <laughs> and that's what we've done for 150 years. We pick and choose when we want to enforce silence and when we want to ignore it. Who gets to decide what is unauthorized and what is expedient? Now, I'm going to try something here by way of illustration to see if I can explain how this issue of the way we read the Bible can only produce division. Now, this chair here is going to represent all the people in our movement who worship with instruments. And by the way, there are no liberals in our movement. There's nobody in Christian church or the Church of Christ that denies the inspiration of the Scripture, the deity of Christ, His virgin birth, His bodily resurrection, His full sufficiency and atonement, His bodily return, His ultimate lordship. Nobody denies those things. Okay? But this guy here, he worships with instruments. I didn't grow up in that church. I go to this church. I don't worship with instruments. And so according to silence, I say to my brother here, you know I love you, but you're my errand brother. <laughs> because you don't accept the authority of the Scripture. I do too accept the authority of the Scripture. I read my Bible every day. I believe my Bible. Yeah, but you can't show me in your Bible where you have permission to use instruments. And so I'm sorry, but... I can't fellowship with you until, until you give up your instrument. And then I will have fellowship with you. We can have unity if you'll just give up your innovation. That's how we've tried to find unity. You give up what I don't approve of and we'll have unity. Well, that seems like a pretty good plan. And so I was telling about what I told my erring brother to my friend over here. I said, you know, he uses instruments. And I told him I'd have unity with him if he'd give them up. Because there's nothing in the New Testament about singing with instruments. He says, well, I'm glad you told him that because it sure bothers me. But I can't find anything in my Bible about a praise team. What are you talking about? A praise team is just an aid to the singing of the church. <laughs> no, a praise team is an innovation. And until you give up your liberal, uh, your liberal innovation, your liberal addition, I really can't have fellowship with you. Hmm. Well, unity's getting harder and harder, isn't it? Because I was just telling these two guys that if they would give up their instruments and their praise teams, I mean, where does the Bible say you can have eight song leaders? Of course, where does the Bible say you can have one? Um, I told them I can't have unity with them. Well, I'm glad to hear you stand for truth. Yes, we do. Yes, we stand for truth. We talk about it all the time in our Bible school. You have Bible school? Where in the New Testament do you have authority for Bible school? I see no pattern for Bible school in the New Testament. Yes, but Bible school is a great uh, aid to teaching children about the scripture that's the job of the parent you have brought an innovation into the Lord's church but if you will give it up I'll have unity with you okay Hey, 
say. I was just telling these liberals over here <laughs> that I'm having nothing to do with them until they give up their instruments and their praise teams and their Bible schools. They don't respect the authority of the Scripture. Well, that's a very, very good thing. I'm glad there are sound brethren left in this world. Yeah, in fact, I'm going to be teaching this out the next Sunday to the orphan home that we support. <laughs> Did I hear you say you support an orphan's home out of the church budget? Well, sure we do. That's a very efficient way to help orphans. I don't read anywhere in my New Testament about supporting orphan homes from a church budget. This is how the slippery slope gets started. <laughs> Today, orphan home. Tomorrow, instrumental music. <laughs> and I'm sorry, but I can't have fellowship with you until you give up your innovation. You know, I couldn't help it over here, what you just told him. And I'd like to think that you're sound too, but I, I was on vacation and visited your church. And when it came time for communion, I saw you served multiple cups. <laughs> My Bible says Jesus took the cup. That's the pattern. It's people like you, you digressives. You liberals that are hurting the cause of Christ. I'd love to have fellowship with you. But I can't do it until you give up your innovation. Hmm. Hello, how you doing? Good. I see you attend the Church of Christ. Yes, true church. Yes, but isn't it sad about all the liberalism in the church today? Preachers won't call instrumental music a sin. I hear about churches that have praise teams. There are churches today that don't stand up strong against Bible school. They don't preach against cooperation, helping orphans and colleges, having multiple cups. My preacher says, brotherhood's in big trouble. You're a preacher. you pay a man to be your preacher? Are you one of those located preacher sectarians? That's how it goes. Today you pay a preacher. Tomorrow you ordain a homosexual. <laughs> now, folks, I know this seems silly. Our movement has split over every chair, over every single chair. We got one more chair. We could have a bunch more chairs. This chair belongs to the brother who won't fellowship this brother because this brother meets in a building. Show me in the New Testament authority for a building. The same person who says, well, for several hundred years the church never used instruments is the same brother liable to the charge, yes, and for several hundred years the church never had buildings. And if one is not necessary, why is the other? Now, the truth of the matter is, our motto has been where the Bible speaks, we speak. And where the Bible is silent, we're silent. That's not true. Our real motto is, where the Bible speaks, we speak. And where the Bible is silent, we have a lot more to say. <laughs> we say a lot where the Bible is silent. And is unity only to be achieved by surrendering to the conclusions of the most narrow-minded of us?